Okay, gang, we're back. Uh, this is lecture number four, the temperature of Earth. I'm just making sure my little red dot still works. Okay, so before we can really talk about it, we need to talk about a little bit about what temperature is. So specifically, temperature is the measure of the average kinetic energy of individual molecules in matter. So basically the speed at which molecules are bouncing around and hitting each other. The more kinetic energy, the faster they're moving, the warmer the air. The slower they're moving, the cooler the air. Uh, for reference, you know, water boils at 100 degrees Celsius or 212 Fahrenheit. Hottest temperature I've recorded on our planet is 136 Fahrenheit, which makes us feel a little bit better here in Phoenix, because well, we've cracked 120 before. No bueno. 98.2 Fahrenheit is average body temperature, room temperature 68, except in Phoenix. Um, freezing zero. And the coldest temperature recorded on our planet is negative 129, which eesh, sounds rough. Anyway, so that's what temperature is. Faster molecules move. Warmer the air, slower they move, cooler the air. Okay, so what controls the temperature on our planet? There's four things that determine uh, the temperature. I mean, obviously the temperature is determined by sunlight hitting the planet, but how that sunlight hits and what happens to that sunlight controls the temperature. And the first one's latitude, second one's altitude, third is cloud cover, fourth is continentality. I'm gonna go over all four of these. Okay, latitude. So maybe not the most exciting diagram, but what we're showing you here is if you're in Brazil, um, which is near the equator, you're roughly the same temperature throughout the year. These letters down here at the bottom refer to months of the year. So January, February, March, April, you get the idea. So if you're near the equator, you actually have no seasons. You're more or less the same temperature throughout the year. But then as you head towards the poles, you start to warm up in the summer and cool off in the winter time. Here's Scotland which does it, uh, Montreal has a big swing, and then Barrow, Alaska. So you get a bigger change in temperature between summer and winter, and generally as you move away from the equator, you're going to cool off. Now there are exceptions to this, but that's the general idea. In summary, as you move away from the equator, you cool off very generally, and you get bigger extremes in temperature between summer and winter. You get seasons. And again, this is because if you, hit the, if you live at the equator, sunlight is more or less direct throughout the year as the sun bounces back and forth. And then as you move towards the poles, you know, in the summertime, you get this really oblique radiation when you do get it, but then in the wintertime, you don't get any radiation at all. So it goes to very, very high extremes up here. Hardly any difference throughout the year at the equator. Okay, altitude. Altitude will impact uh, your temperature. You guys probably know this maybe if you've driven up to Flagstaff. Flagstaff is going to be cooler than it is down here in Phoenix. And that's because the density of the atmosphere decreases as you get higher in the atmosphere. So if you were at a plane at 30,000 feet and you decided to step outside, it's going to be extremely cold, number one. But number two, there's, there's hardly any air for you to really breathe up there. You would, you would definitely struggle. Um, specifically, the density of the atmosphere at 18,000 feet is half that it is it is at sea level. Okay, so there's just fewer molecules as you get higher into the atmosphere. And if you have fewer molecules, then you have fewer molecules that can absorb energy, and so you don't get as hot. So here's a comparison between Concepcion and La Paz. Concepcion um, is pretty low in elevation. Let's see here, 1,600 feet. And La Paz is at 13,000 feet. And because they're near the equator, they roughly have the same temperatures throughout the year, but one is quite a bit cooler than the other one. And that's because it's higher in elevation or altitude. Okay, cloud cover. I think we've already covered this, but just again, uh, clouds tend to moderate temperature. So during the day, clouds will reflect a lot of incoming light, keeping it cooler. 
And at night, clouds will absorb a lot of long wave energy coming off the Earth's surface and re-emit it back down. So they act as like a blanket at night. So during the day, they keep you cooler. At night, they keep things warmer. So they moderate temperature. Okay, so now we need to talk about continentality, which is, uh, well, it's pretty interesting. Continentality means uh, if you live close to an ocean, you're not very continental. If you live far away from an ocean, you have high continentality. And what that means is if you live closer to an ocean, your temperatures are going to be more moderate. You're not going to get as hot. You're not going to get as cold. If you live far away from an ocean or large body of water, you can tend to get hotter and you're going to tend to get colder. So living next to a large body of water will moderate your temperature. That's because of four things. The first one is because of evaporative cooling. Uh, water evaporates and when it evaporates it absorbs latent heat because the water molecules have to go from moving as liquid which isn't that fast to moving really fast as water vapor which you can't see and in order to make that jump from water into water vapor it pulls heat from the water and <clears throat> pulls heat from the atmosphere and it helps keep that area cooler the next one is transparency uh, transparency means water, instead of just heating up the surface, like when light hits this rock, it more or less hits this rock, and there can be some energy that gets transfused deeper down due to conduction, but it doesn't go very deep. But in water, because it's transparent, water can penetrate up to 100 feet. I'm sorry, not water. Light can penetrate up to 100 feet into the water. And so you're heating up a large thickness of, uh, I guess, the water column. And so, uh, because you're heating up a volume down here in the water instead of a surface, again, it takes more energy to uh, heat it up. Specific heat, this is just a cool heat image showing you all the hot areas in a city, but specific heat just means uh, because of the way hydrogen and oxygen bond to each other to make a water molecule, it takes a decent it takes more energy on average to heat up a water molecule than it does most other molecules that exist so water is known to have a high specific heat which means again it's hard to heat it up and it's hard to cool it off just based on how the molecule is built the water molecule okay the next one is convection and all convection means, just like a pot of boiling water will convect, because of uh, the winds that are blowing along ocean, along the surface of the ocean, you're going to get ocean currents. And there are going to be places where basically the ocean turns over. So warm water on the surface goes deeper down, and the cold water from deeper down comes up to the surface. And so you're basically heating a huge volume of water through this turnover effect. Um, again, helping to distribute a lot of energy and making it differ, difficult to heat up or cool down. So if we take a look at the whole picture, uh, we have evaporation. So water will evaporate, taking latent heat and uh, cooling it off. Transparency, light dives deeper down into water than it does over here on the surface. And you also don't have as much evaporation. Uh, water has a high specific heat, just the way it's built. And the molecules over here on the land have less specific heat and water can convect energy and land cannot okay so that's continentality let's take a look at uh, san francisco san francisco has a marine climate not a continental climate and so it's pretty mild uh, it gets warm in the summer but not too warm and it cools off in the winter but not too cool you compare it to wichita kansas which is in the middle of our continent and it gets below freezing uh, even though it's not very high in elevation, only 1,300 feet, uh, but it can get very hot uh, in the summertime up here in the, the 90s. So much bigger extremes in temperature because it's farther away from an ocean. This is a continental climate. This is a marine climate. Uh, here's a picture of global annual temperature ranges. So like here in the middle of Canada, you have a range of 45 degrees between the hottest and coldest time of year. Uh, that's impressive. Um, uh, over here in Siberia, it's even 60 degrees. So you can get very hot in the summer, but extremely cold uh, in the winter time. 
And these are obviously probably the two most continental places on the planet because they're the deepest inland. As you get near the coast, um, temperatures be, are going to be much more mild. All right, here's your list of things to know for the exam. Definition of temperature, the effects of latitude on temperature, effects of altitude. Four ways water moderates temperature. Uh, how does transparency work? How does evaporative cooling work? How does convection work? How does specific heat work? And what is continentality? All right, thanks guys, appreciate it.